Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Martijn Baker. I work for VMware as one of their cloud strategists. And this is the session about large-scale mission-critical enterprise deployments with OpenStack. And I'm going to talk first about how VMware Integrated OpenStack works. And afterwards, I've got Julius, Harry Ban. He works for Amadeus, so is one of our customers, and he's going to talk to you about how large-scale mission-critical deployments actually work, because I can talk about it from a product perspective, but he's actually doing the real work, and I think that's a valuable lesson for you guys to learn. Um, but first of all, I wanted to start. So I'll first give you a story about VMware and OpenStack. So what's the story? Of course, there's a little bit of an introduction to what VMware Integrated OpenStack is, and then we'll go into the journey that basically Julius went on with Amadeus and VMware Integrated OpenStack. So that's the thing that um, we're going to talk about. Last but not least, well, basically a next step for you guys to learn more about VMware Integrated OpenStack. And of course, there's a little bit more time for Q&A. That's the thing that we really want to do if you've got questions for either me or for Julius around the topic of VMware Integrated OpenStack. But let's start. So this fits into a broader perspective, a broader vision that we have from a VMware perspective. What we're trying to achieve from a VMware perspective is consistent infrastructure, consistent operations across the private cloud, the public cloud, and the edge. That's the end goal, because a lot of customers are nowadays using data centers, but it consists out of a multitude of things that they want to achieve. It's out of vSphere infrastructures, it's, it's public cloud, but still there's a, a large amount of customers that are still looking for OpenStack. That's the thing that we need to achieve. From a VMA perspective, we are trying to accommodate all of them for them to, to be able to manage and to, to host the applications, because that's in the end what needs to happen from an enterprise perspective. You need to be able to host any type of application, and you need to have choice of what infrastructure you want to run on. Someone to move to, to, from a private cloud to the public cloud, but OpenStack is still a very valid thing. And from a VMware perspective, this is more or less the, the, the vision that we have for a VMware cloud. It basically consists out of a multitude of, of infrastructures you see at the bottom, but it's all to host either virtual machines, containers, or Kubernetes. And that's what we typically talk about, and what we're trying to achieve from a VMware perspective is to create that consistent infrastructure for both virtual machines and containers. From a VMA perspective, we see then that you need to manage all those resources. If you're either running it on private cloud or the public cloud or on the edge, you need to have a consistent layer of management to, con to basically uh, manage all those different resources. And that's the goal that we see from an IT operations perspective. You need to be able to manage all those resources effectively to be able to provide that as a service towards your customers. If it's either developers or line of business, they need to be able to host that to, to basically provide the applications. So we're looking also for consistent operations. And in the end, it's to, to manage both the existing applications, so the traditional applications, but we now move into this world of containers with Kubernetes and that, all, that kind of stuff. So it's really to create a consistent developer experience. This is our picture. This is a picture that we provide from a VMware perspective. And then the question is always from, from, okay, but VMware, OpenStack, how does that play well together? Well, from our perspective, well, that's to be. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a black thing that was not the intention, so. Uh, but we actually love, uh, love OpenStack. I think we've been one of the, 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 the key contributors of what we're doing from a, from a VMware perspective. It's basically the... Um, no, let's go back a little bit. Uh, we've been doing this, this, this whole development from an OpenStack perspective for the last couple of years. We've been contributing to OpenStack, and we're basically providing to, to create a stable platform. Vio is our product, so VMware integrated OpenStack is our product, but we've been trying to add content to the OpenStack uh, community for a long time now. We're actually trying to solve something, because OpenStack, building that, building the cloud, well, that, that's not that complex, but it becomes more complex because you also need to monitor it. You need to troubleshoot it, you need to scale it up, scale it down, 
and you need to upgrade it. These are a lot of challenges that we see from a VMware perspective that are happening with a lot of customers. Customers are moving towards OpenStack and they want to be able to do all those things. From our perspective, how we try to help is to create a faster time to value. That's actually what we're trying to achieve. And we are trying to simplify uh, the complexity. Because we see a lot of customers struggling to deliver an open stack environment. Somebody makes a decision and it takes about six to nine months to actually realize and get an open stack environment. The solution we have for that is basically something what we call the best of both worlds. So we see VMware Integrated OpenStack as a solution that you host OpenStack on the best platform that we have available, our software-defined data center stack. Our software-defined data center stack consists of three things. Everybody hopefully knows a data center consists of three, three things, compute, storage, and network. So the software-defined data center stack that we have from a VMware perspective is vSphere which probably most of you in the room are familiar with. Storage perspective, we've got vSAN, and we've also got NSX, our networking software-defined networking solution. And we combine that with a solution that out of the box provides you the OpenStack as an automated solution. And we've been doing this for quite some time now. We actually acquired a large OpenStack environment uh, when we did the acquisition of NICERA a couple of years ago from the NSX environment. Out of that acquisition came the product VMware Integrated OpenStack, an automated solution to deploy OpenStack on top of your vSphere environment. That's basically what we're trying to do. But the result we're trying to, to achieve with VMware Integrated OpenStack is simplification, is ease of use, and to repurpose what you already have. So your existing infrastructure a lot of people are using vSphere. There's no point in, in moving that away from that. We're trying to repurpose it and to build an automated solution on top of that. That's the thing we're doing. And also one of the key things, the knowledge that you already have from your existing infrastructure, we're trying to use towards that OpenStack environment that you're trying to build. So what is VMware Integrated OpenStack? So it's basically the combination of OpenStack together with a VMware Integrated OpenStack management server that we provide, and that creates VMware Integrated OpenStack. Of course, from a VMware perspective, we combine that with all the nice products that we have in our software-defined data center stack. The combination creates you an OpenStack environment on top of our battle-tested solution from vSphere, vSAN, and NSX. So, where do we see our customers using those, those, uh, th this solution? So basically they use it for four things. Either it's an enterprise automation uh, um, solution that they're trying to provide with OpenStack. They're trying to deliver a developer cloud. They're trying to enable the edge computing. Or, as we now have, we're trying to empower an AV solution, so a telco cloud. From a VMware perspective, we are moving into all these, these environments and trying to provide you with a consistent infrastructure on which you can provide OpenStack as a service. VMware Integrated OpenStack is then the solution that makes it possible in an automated way to deploy OpenStack in all these three, four, four use cases in an easy way, in a simple manner, and with a quicker time to value. That's actually the thing that we're trying to achieve. So how do we do that? Well, here you see an overview of the OpenStack components and how they integrate. So you see, for example, that we've got drivers for Nova, Neutron, Glance, and Cinder, and for Keystone, to be able to integrate into our software-defined data center stack. That's the key goal that we're trying to achieve with VMware Integrated OpenStack, is the combination between what you provide from an OpenStack environment and what we are trying to provide you from a software-defined data center stack. The combination is actually the, the thing that we are trying to achieve, a management solution that provides you, via your integrated OpenStack, more or less out of the box. You install a server, so the VMware integrated OpenStack management server, and that basically deploys OpenStack on top of your software-defined data center. That's the key goal of leveraging the infrastructure that you already have, 
the assumption here is that you're running it on vSphere and that you can then get the combination of VMware integrated open stack with uh, 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 the software defined data center stack. The latest release that we have actually is not 5.0, we just released 5.1. It's based on Queens. Um, that's the, king, the thing that we're trying to put into the package. Uh, and it deploys automatically on top of the vSphere environment. That's the key goal. So what are the core differentiators from a VMA integrated OpenStack perspective? Well, simplified installation, it's a seamless upgrade, and we are trying to provide intelligent operations for, for, uh, for OpenStack. So basically you need to, to look at it from if you have a vSphere environment, you use VMware integrated OpenStack, within a couple of hours, you've got an OpenStack instance running, and we provide an intelligent operations framework so that you can manage and monitor the whole solution. And the best thing yet, if there's a new, new uh, solution, come out of new uh, OpenStack release, then we will provide you with an upgrade package to move from one version to the other. We, battle ta we test that in our environment. We provide that as a service towards our customers. You download the package into, the, uh, into your VMware integrated OpenStack environment. And at that moment, we can upgrade the solution from version to version. That's the key goal. So it all starts with this simplified um, installation method. So what we provide is an OVA. So that's a packaging format for vSphere. You download that OVA, you import it into the vSphere client, and that will give you a VMware integrated OpenStack instance. When you click this, this solution, you'll be able to provide it with configuration, and with that configuration, it will then automatically deploy, in this case, Queens, on top of your vSphere environment. That's the key goal. The virtual appliance is, is something that you can download from the My VMware website if you've got the correct licenses, because of course this comes with a licensing model from VMware. The other thing that we're trying to provide is this seamless upgrade experience, not only from an OpenStack perspective, but also from a software-defined data center perspective. We take care of all the solutions, and that's the key value that we try to provide from, an open, from a VMware perspective, is to be able to upgrade your software-defined data center, but also do a hitless experience uh, an upgrade experience for the OpenStack piece. And that's where we saw a lot of customers struggle to move from one version to the other. We don't want people to, to stay on a, on a previous lease because it's a hard thing to upgrade. No, you need to be able to upgrade whenever you want to do that. And that's where we provide more or less of an update. You can download it, you can upgrade whenever you want to do that to be able to move towards the new version of OpenStack whenever you want to do that. We provide you with that package. We already tested that package into our own environment, and that will give you then that hitless, zero touch and experience that we're trying to achieve with this OpenStack environment. And the other thing that we're providing is not only the OpenStack intelligence, we're trying to provide you an intelligent operations framework so that you can manage and monitor your OpenStack environment. So we've got four solutions that will help you. The one, first thing is VBLIZE operations, an infrastructure monitoring solution that gives you insight of what's happening inside of uh, uh, your software-defined data center and in the OpenStack environment. We've got a management pack for VBLIZE operations to be able to monitor the solution that gets into it. The other one is VBLIZE log inside. So of course, a lot of logs come out of that. We've got a logging solution that gives you insight of what's happening from a log perspective, so that you get an insight of what's happening inside of your environment. VBLIZE operations is that monitoring tool that provides you a dashboard. If something goes wrong, you can use VBLIZE log inside to troubleshoot and to get to the root cause analysis as soon as possible. So there's a combination between the two. The other two things, VBLIZE network inside, well that provides you from a networking layer and inside of what's happening, and that's a key thing when you're moving into the OpenStack environment, is to get an insight of what's happening in your uh, OpenStack environment from a networking perspective. VBLIZE network inside will give you that insight and give you a visualization of how traffic flows through your OpenStack environment. And last but not least, 
We've got the VB Loss business component, which gives you insight from a cost perspective. It's not only from an operational perspective that you want to have insight of what's happening in your open stack environment, you also want to know about the costs, and that's what we provide from a VB Loss business perspective. So this is on the operation side, but from an open stack perspective, we've got a long-standing commitment. We've been starting in 2015 with our VIA 1.0 solution. At that time, it was based on Icehouse. But you see, with every release, we've upgraded to a later version. And this gives you the ability to easily move from one version to the other. From Icehouse to Kilo, from Kilo to Mitaka, from Mitaka to Okata. And we're now at Queens and we'll probably move to the next version uh, when it's there. Of course, this is a little bit of an outdated slide because it's now 5.0 and we're currently at 5.1, but you hopefully see that besides all the latest features that we provide from an OpenStack perspective, we also provide you a lot of value on all the other things. We currently also have Kubernetes on top of our VMware Integrated OpenStack solution that you can use out of the box to give you, your customers Kubernetes. Uh, we provide management in the security and, and metering, the management and preferred, and of course, we've got an advanced networking. The true value from VMware Integrated OpenStack is you combine it with NSX. That's the true value, because we have NSX as our software-defined networking solution to provide you a software-matic approach towards firewalls, layer two, layer three, load balancers, and integrate that into an open stack environment. That's the true value when, when you really try to achieve the full potential out of VMware integrated open stack is when you combine it with our NSX software defined networking solution. But maybe Julius can talk a little bit more about that when he's speaking about the MDA use case. So latest release, well, our solution is based on Queens. That's the latest one. Uh, and of course, all the enhancements that went into Queens, we provide that as a package to our customers, which they can use to upgrade their current solution and to be able to move towards this new version at a seamless and hitless experience. That's the thing we're trying to achieve in an easy way, in a consistent way, move towards the new version of OpenStack on top of a vSphere platform. The true value is, is that it simplifies the way we operate OpenStack. For that, it, we've, been, we've seen customers that basically had a vSphere environment. In a couple of hours, they were able to deliver OpenStack functionality towards their developers, their lines of business. And that's the key value of VMware Integrated OpenStack. Besides that, it also requires no OpenStack PhD. It's something that we provide out of the box. I already said, you just need to download the OVA, import it into the vSphere client, put some configuration in it, and it will then deploy it. It's an easy way to get OpenStack up and running on top of your vSphere environment. And again, it simplifies OpenStack operations, not only from a VMware perspective, but also the way we, we, we monitor, manage, and operate the solution which can be handed out to developers to get an insight of what's happening inside of your OpenStack environment. And of course, last but not least, it's a single vendor support. So you call us if something goes wrong in that VMware integrated OpenStack environment, you dial our global support services and they will help you troubleshoot the solution. That's the key value that we are trying to deliver with VMware integrated OpenStack. Of course, it's nice to hear everything from me, and I'm just here to tell you about all the nice features that are in VMware Integrated OpenStack. But I think the key value, of the, the, the key uh, experience comes from customers that actually use it. So that's why I want to hand it over to Julius, who's going to talk about his implementation with Amadeus. So, hello everybody. My name is Julius Heriban. I'm here for Amadeus Data Processing, Amadeus in general. We are a big service provider when it comes to the uh, to, uh, travel industry. And uh, I joined Amadeus uh, roughly 16 months ago. So all I will present, uh, the credit belongs to the hardware engineers uh, 
the developers uh, of Amadeus to be here and just to speak. Uh, but I hope I can give you some insight because uh, I have some experience not only for this but as well for other clouds uh, which uh, in the past five to ten years I helped to, uh, helped to build uh, including things like uh, the starting of uh, the Open Telecom Cloud and some other PMW's clouds and uh, outsourcing and cloud services in general. So basically, what is Amadeus about? Yeah? Uh, if you came over to Berlin by plane, there is a very high chance that you use services of Amadeus without knowing. We are a B2B business. We are focusing on services to airlines and, uh, and we serve uh, more than half of, uh, of all airlines uh, worldwide. We give services uh, to airports, we give services uh, to uh, railway companies uh, and so on and so forth. And it's a highly transactional business, in a, in a low latency requirements, uh, a consistency databases, and so on and so forth. And that's actually the, the, the biggest challenge of Amadeus to grow and to deliver high quality, always on services uh, in an environment where uh, the pace of change is everything and you need to deliver software in a kind of uh, private SaaS model uh, to, to businesses in this critical area and to serve uh, the customer experience of all of you uh, when you travel. Some, some numbers just to illustrate it uh, are on the screen and uh, roughly we process more transactions second than Google search. We have some colleagues there and friends just to give you an impression. It's, it's, it's different type of transactions. And we have a, a big business which is around uh, distributing the travel content. So if you go to Expedia and a lot of other sites and, and uh, are looking for what is the cheapest flight from A to B, and in the past you went to a travel agency and they, they gave you something like uh, three offers and you took one. Yeah, that was 10 years ago. Today you go to web page, look and get a kind of unbelievable amount of uh, all sorts of uh, potential combinations and you pick the cheapest one. The change from three look to one book, yeah, what we call look to book ratio, to today, which is something like 100,000 books, so request selects for, for some content and you click only on one and pay that uh, 100,000 more than it used to be 5 to 10 years ago. That's the growth ratio we need to process when it comes to transactions. And it's exponentially growing. And on the end, hopefully, in the end, uh, in, a, in a transaction where you buy an airplane ticket or where you visit the airport and you, you go to, to, to the machine which is scanning your barcode, and these transactions are processed by the systems of Amadeus. Not only Amadeus, but a but lot of them. Okay. I've brought some illustration pictures for some of our environments. And this environment is uh, not focused on, on the uh, airline or air in general business, but it's focusing on the so-called hospitality business. So behind is a, is a, a big hotel chain which is served uh, directly in the US and we succeed uh, to, to be great for this hotel chain just a few weeks ago at uh, the 10,000 hotel uh, milestone which was a great one uh, for us and the whole environment is, is uh, in a kind of a twin data center DR uh, environment to deliver really a 5.9 uh, availability and it's hosted 100%, really 100% on OpenStack. <coughs> More inside of that, uh, you, you see again these two locations, uh, you see a stack of, uh, of, uh, uh, of some of the program uh, VMware technologies like vSphere, uh, NSX and you name them, 
Yeah. Uh, then there is uh, the bio layer which establish uh, infrastructure as a service. Then we consume it uh, on, or not consume, we produce uh, path level services on top of it by the means of uh, Red Hat OpenShift, we are a big user and believer uh, of that. And, uh, and then we produce really uh, the SaaS application on top to ensure that, uh, that actually the business can, can uh, serve the trap. And we have a similar but a little extended environment which, which more focus on, on uh, previously explained uh, the shopping experience uh, which is in the meantime much more than one or two data centers. It's in the meantime extended uh, to public cloud because uh, this, this growth in the transactions is such uh, heavy and exponential uh, that uh, single physical data centers are not anymore capable of serving that. So we have a, a hybrid cloud strategy which very much intercorporate uh, pieces of various public clouds and uh, of course big pieces of, of, of private cloud uh, produce uh, on our own and, and together in a kind of federated fashion overlaid uh, or with, with a unifying pass layer that's serving uh, the customer needs uh, or the needs of the customers of our customers. Yeah. A more detailed view on this when we, when we look on a, on a public cloud piece uh, is, is some kind of a region construct where you have in all of regions uh, availability zones and in the availability zones you have, uh, you have uh, what we call pot, a kind of bundle of uh, various components uh, including uh, something like couch base uh, for synchronizing the data, uh, including all sorts of uh, number crunching uh, systems which, which calculate what is the best fare from A to B and so on and so forth. And uh, there is a central place uh, where, where you have the master data which get replicated over to multiple locations in a kind of onion ring uh, of, of multiple caching engines uh, and uh, all that together deliver from various uh, places uh, the transaction and the data uh, the customer's needs. And basically, that piece is glued together yeah, or, or put together, establish uh, what we call a globally distributed Amadeus. Yeah, it's an initiative where we outgrow our own data centers and really embrace uh, a public cloud uh, to establish a, a, a hybrid cloud production uh, for us, uh, out of uh, various locations, technologies and so on. And uh, for most of what you see, uh, we, we use uh, or we focus uh, on using open technology with, with Ansible and Terraform and some other uh, orchestration tools. Uh, we, we rely heavily on open technology when it comes to our own data centers, but want to combine it, not to build just another silo, but combine it uh, in a way that we can transform the current uh, infrastructure of us uh, to, a, to a cloud experience uh, for our consumers. And that's actually a sweet spot when we speak about uh, uh, what, what Martin was presenting. And we, we selected, and I was not there, not there when it was selected, something like three and a half years ago, selected uh, the bio product really as a glue between the traditional IT world, which, which works. Yeah, you know how it works, yeah? And, uh, and the new world of, of DevOps and uh, our SRE teams uh, uh, focusing more on the, on the productivity about the CICD pipeline and development and so on, and to glue these things together. Yeah, there, are, there are challenges with that, but there are also advantages. Yeah? 
And one of the challenge is that actually it's hard to find uh, skills and people who understand both uh, the VMP ecosystem and the OpenStack ecosystem at once. Yeah? So if one of you uh, are these blessed individuals, yeah, please uh, come after the speech to me, I can offer you a good job. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the challenges. Yeah? The advantages is uh, that uh, we actually succeed to transform uh, some of the operation teams and some of the investments we've made in, in hardware, in licensing, in infrastructure, in, in processes, and you can imagine that uh, uh, such highly transactional system is really high SLA and, and proper change controls and, uh, and proper security. We are PCI DSS uh, uh, audited environment because we process credit card data and so on and so forth. So security is, is one of the uh, critical pieces uh, to maintain and to deliver. But VMware has definitely a sweet spot you know, compared to some other technologies because they are already a long time in the enterprise banking and so on journey. Uh, so, so to have a clue in between these worlds and hopefully match them in an effective way and that's probably a challenge when not only Amadeus is, is, is facing, but, but most of you is facing. Uh, and uh, there are of course other challenges, uh, like uh, things like upgrades and so on. Uh, and we are in a heavy process to upgrade some of our, some of our yeah, legacy ARS uh, environments, which is still ARS, but which was at some point in time uh, frozen to to not jeopardize a huge uh, business migration, so onboarding of customers, so we need to revamp that, uh, and uh, maybe in half a year uh, we might have a, a good or bad story to tell how, how it worked to upgrade uh, a kind of uh, four-digit host uh, uh, calls to, to uh, queens and so on. Yeah. The last releases which we've, which we've deployed on the, on the newer clouds of us, because we have in the meantime multiple of them in multiple locations, uh, are very promising. Uh, so we see we grow really exponentially. So, and that's basically what I wanted to explain. Feel free to uh, question. It's not a sales pitch, uh, it's not for me. So uh, feel free to ask uh, and uh, I'm happy to have a proper peer exchange for the reasons why I came in. Okay. Uh, first question. Um, did you describe the production environment only or also the same, do you use the same stack for um, development and integration uh, environments? Uh, yeah, that's a tricky question. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, we, use, we use in some of our dev environments as well as other flavor of open stack. Yeah. Nevertheless, yeah, as we progress on the, on, the, on the stages and we have something like 11 phases between a, a view dev on a, on a desktop uh, up to a production uh, to ensure the code quality and integration and so on uh, is maintained. Yeah? There is a clear cut uh, between okay, what's, what's a just enough uh, dev focus thing and what's already a, a QA uh, and then integration or even user acceptance tests uh, or similar. Uh, and that, that line is drawn very much around how can we reduce the PCI DSS scope and around some security and flexibility needs. And it's not about technology. <coughs> and so, so I haven't shown here uh, the, the, the dev cloud, uh, but it's of course uh, part of the story. Come on, guys. Questions? Comments? Remarks? I hope it was interesting. And I hope if, if some of you are on the same journey like we are, uh, we can have a peer exchange. Uh,
help each other with experiences, not to get caught in the same types. And we from VMware are also happy to talk to you then, that's still the whole thing. I am partially sales, but I do think that the, the, the use case that, that, that uh, Julius sent out, we're trying to simplify stuff. It's not only about the plumbing, so it's not only about st uh, compute storage and, 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 uh, and networking. It's in the end, and hopefully that you've sh seen that in the presentation that Julius gave, it's all about the application. And what we're trying to provide from a VMware perspective is that solid base where you can host that application on top of. And as you've seen, it's not only a VMware-only stack, because this is a combination of OpenShift together with VIO from VMware on top of a software-defined data center. And of course, there's also the challenge of the multitude of multiple clouds that you then need to manage. And that's the key value that we want to send out from a VMA perspective. VIO for us is a simplification of running OpenStack on top of your vSphere environment to be able to do what you're trying to achieve. That's a little bit of the difference uh, of the, the thing that we're trying to provide to our customers. Um, and hopefully we've shown in this presentation the combination of a customer together with what we do from a product perspective that we're trying to simplify and make your life a little bit easier. Not so much that you can sit back and relax, but in the end, we need to provide services towards our customers. In this case, it's the developer building the application to do processing on top of that for the uh, traveling industry. The last thing I had on this slide, and Julius already showed it a little bit, because you were flipping through doing it, uh, is if you want to go and test this, we've got a hands-on lab that you can do VMware integrated OpenStack and test it yourself within half an hour, one and a half hours, two hours, you will run through the product and hopefully you will see then that it's pretty easy to set up and that's the key value. And again, if we still have questions, feel free to do that, we'll be here. And if you have any follow-ups, please do so. The next session is actually one of my colleagues and they're deep diving into what we do with VIA with an NSX, with a networking perspective. So if you're interested in that, what we do with NSX, please remain seated and they will show you that. So thank you for attending this session. And if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them. Thank you. Thank you.